You're listening to News Hour from the BBC with me, Rob Young. Now, the civil war in the north of Ethiopia resumed recently after a five month ceasefire, which had led to hopes of a peaceful solution to the conflict. The fighting between federal forces and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF, has returned to a region blighted by mass starvation since the war began in November 2020. Other states and ethnic groups, as well as forces from Ethiopia's authoritarian neighbour Eritrea, have re-entered the conflict on the side of Addis Ababa. Both the federal government and Tigrayan authorities have accused the other of atrocities, and independent information is hard to come by. Ethiopia's ambassador to the UK, Teferi Malesi Dest, told NewsHour that the federal forces were only defending themselves against the Tigrayans. The government is still on a defensive posture. Uh, we are not uh, attacking inside Tigray, so it is uh, defending and also calling on TPLF to come back to the negotiating table and we would like to encourage the international community to do so because there is no solution in war. Well, the United States is trying to help bring about a ceasefire. Washington, D.C.'s special envoy for the Horn of Africa, Mike Hammer, is currently in Ethiopia. I've been talking to Brad Sherman, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives who sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He takes a special interest in Ethiopia. Does he agree with the ambassador we just heard from that the federal government was simply defending itself? Well, it appears as if the uh, Eritreans and the Ethiopians are both attacking uh, Tigray. But I will agree with him that we need to reopen talks. And once there's a ceasefire, we need to get the food aid back in. The starvation will start again with the trucks not, uh, not getting into Tigray. He also told us in that interview that there are no Eritrean soldiers inside Ethiopia. But you're saying that's wrong. That's clearly wrong. Eritrea's ambassador to Kenya, Tanzania, basically tweeted, hey, our troops are going in and uh, we hope they're successful. The Ethiopian government uh, it's now denying Eritrean involvement is also one that has said they're going to wipe out uh, Tigrayans for 100 years and refers to them as cancer. The last time Eritrean forces were there. They were denied. The U.S. determined that they were not only there, but committing war crimes, mass sexual violence, and we imposed sanctions. So the last denial was clearly false, as indicated not only by the U.S. government, but AP and Human Rights Watch, and just about everybody else. And when it comes to the situation on the ground at the moment, do you know whether aid is getting through, food aid in particular? It isn't. And uh, that's what concerns me most. Bullets can kill in the thousands. Uh, starvation can kill in the tens and hundreds of thousands. And who is to blame for that food aid not getting through? Well, clearly for the, over a year, the blame was on the Ethiopian government. Who is to blame now is a little harder because, again, we don't know how the ceasefire broke down. But we know that Eritrea is completely to blame in that not only is there one road in uh, from Ethiopia, but Eritrea has ports on the Red Sea, roads that go to Tigray, and uh, the Eritrean government has had a complete blockade of, uh, of Tigray for, uh, for years. We heard the Ethiopian ambassador to the UK there calling on the, uh, the TPLF to come to the negotiating table. As far as you are aware, why are talks not taking place? Who is refusing to talk? I think both sides are saying they're willing to talk. I know the TPLF and other Tigrayan authorities would prefer that the U.S. be the mediator. I believe Addis Ababa would prefer the AU be the mediator. And I don't care. What is the way out then? The way out is a negotiated uh, settlement in which uh, Tigray has substantial autonomy and has access to the whole world and is no longer under siege. And, and also that the tens of thousands of Tigrayans in other parts of Ethiopia that have been incarcerated just because of their ethnicity are freed. Is there a, a level of Tigrayan autonomy that you think Addis Ababa would be willing to accept? When people want to reach a peace deal, they accept things that they say they would never accept. And ultimately, uh, and I agree with the Ethiopian ambassador on this, the answer is at the negotiating table. 
but elements uh, in the Ethiopian government that have called uh, Tigrayans uh, weeds and cancer and called for, for them to be wiped out hopefully won't be the guiding force on the Addis Ababa side of this. Do you think there is a genuine willingness in Addis Ababa to try to reach a peaceful negotiated settlement? I don't know. It's got to be put to the test. And clearly there are elements in the Addis Ababa government that are not. But uh, ultimately, uh, the survival of all of the ethnicities of Ethiopia, but particularly the Tigrayans, depends upon bringing this war to a conclusion. Who do you think an honest broker in this conflict could be, given that the two sides disagree on who should play that role? I think the U.S. would play the best role First, because I think we're good at it. Second, because I think our special envoy, Mike Hammer, would be excellent in a locator. But also, there is a tendency at the AU to support national governments. And uh, this is a national government responsible for the deaths of uh, hundreds of thousands of Tigrayans. So I don't think that they're entitled to a slant in their direction. But what's most important is that the peace talks uh, start to as quickly as possible, that we have not just a ceasefire and getting the food trucks in, but then providing services and, uh, of course, letting people out of, of, of prisons in other parts of Ethiopia who've been interred simply because of their ethnicity. You mentioned Mike Hammer there, the US Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa. We know he is in Ethiopia this week. Do you know whether he will be able to get into Tigray to see for himself what is happening? I don't know. I, I think he should it's possible that that's something you wouldn't want to announce in advance. But uh, certainly if you weren't doing it with the full blessing of the Ethiopian government, you couldn't announce it in advance. And what do you make of the international community's response to the resumption of fighting in Ethiopia? Is this crisis receiving the attention it deserves? Well, I hate to complain to the BBC because you're focusing on it literally in this interview. But in general, it has not received uh, the attention the number of deaths in Ethiopia far exceeds uh, those uh, in Ukraine. Now, Ukraine poses uh, issues of, uh, of of international borders and, uh, uh, and and some other issues, but in terms of the the death and destruction, uh, what's happening in Ethiopia is as severe as anything happening anywhere in the world. That was U.S. Congressman Brad Sherman there, who sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and he was talking to us from Washington D.C.